there is something called metastasis now back in the day the African witch doctors well I'm not an expert on them but what I've seen on television is that one of their methods when all else failed I hope was to take this big broom and beat the evil spirit usually in the form of a disease out of a patient now I know the feeling and I confess I have often wondered if that wouldn't work when everything else did not work for a particular patient I wouldn't say patient friend anyway now here's the thing every ancient culture has had as the basis of their life science that illness is a lot of the time not a physical phenomenon you have problems with childbirth normal have the soup uh, problems around puberty, problems with teething, problems in old age, right? Those are um, physical for the most part and you have a soup or you have a herbal tea or you have a medicine and it's dealt with. However, there is disease which is different. It is a phenomenon which when suppressed in one part of the body could actually and in most cases does move to another part of the body cancer for example what is cancer it's this phenomenon you can deal with the cancer in the breasts let's say and it can move somewhere else in the body and they call that metastasis infection spreads you can catch a throat infection next thing you know your ears are infected too and um, perhaps the sinuses and so on now the most common example of metastasis is not one acknowledged but it's true it's when you have a problem that manifests in one part of your body let's say uh, inflammation of the joints or tonsils the tonsils are this this region let's say the parotid glands which get swollen up when you have mumps and uh, there's the tonsils and now you suppress that with antibiotics or whatever I use the word suppress because on the surface it looks like the infection or the inflammation is dealt with but in reality very often it is not dealt with but pushed into a place not so directly troubling to the person in their daily life so it goes somewhere else there are people who have studied this hundreds of years ago who studied it so here's here's what today's topic is it's about how to really deal with this shape-shifting illness I know a little bit about it trust me and you know I could sit here and say a lot of politically correct things about how you can actually deal with this but as life is short and who knows I might never have this chance again and so I'll just tell you what I know to be the truth and what I found working for me I have found that shape-shifting illness is caused by a decision not fully made or not fully enforced a decision and I find that facing that decision 
that you have already arrived at and can't actually do anything about now and actually enforcing that in your life is the solution of the problem. Now I am not speaking about a decision like um, let's have uh, potatoes um, for dinner tonight. I'm speaking about a decision where there's this moment and you just know that this is what you have to do next. It's a spirit decision. Can you remember a time when you were, let's say, you were just looking around the room and it hit you. I have to move. Or you were in your car, you were driving somewhere, you stopped at the traffic lights and just before the light went green, I have to do this. That is not a decision made with your mind, but it is a decision that your spirit has made that you have come to be aware of. Now, when we make such decisions, that, that moment when that decision comes, that is a form of energy so potent, so potent that life runs by that energy. That is life energy. Imagine that huge, life-changing, life-altering energy. Imagine if you ignore it. Imagine if you push it aside because you're scared of, of what comes next, of, of, of how you're going to make the changes that this decision will ask you to make. That huge amount of energy will stay in the body like a little pent up little volcano taking more and more energy just to stay in place and not blast off and, and, and shatter your bones and your internal organs. Now wherever that little volcano moves in the body, there's going to be a problem. Deadness, decay, inflammation, all this sort of thing. And that is essentially what a shape-shifting illness is. Now, I know it seems easy to say you've got to face your decisions and you've got to enforce them. Because until you do that, they'll keep moving around the place. I know that's easy to say and um, at some point you'll just have to get brave and decide and that point will come for most people it, it just it just comes I want to address the situation where a person just cannot find out what exactly is that suppressed decision and I want to tell you that in the past, the doctors would say, these were the well-meaning old school doctors, they would say, go to the seaside for a few weeks, think about things, face your reality, and come back then, you'll be fine. There were some other doctors who would say um, something like, and I find this very useful, what was that thing? you used to do the last time you were truly healthy? Was it dancing? Was it a long drive to a particular place? Was it a few hours watching the waves of the sea? Was it cooking? Was it baking? <laughs> Whatever it was, do it again. And then there are three things which are what I find um, extremely helpful for those with shape-shifting illness. Really simple stuff. The first is support yourself with vital energy. 
You can do a lot of things, but my favorites are herbs that have vitamin C in them, rose hips, my super antioxidants, pomegranate, fig, and um, the link is there in the article um, beneath. Maritime pine bark. There, there are so many. Um, there are so many herbs and so many ways you can support yourself with vital energy and you have to do that because if you've been through shape-shifting illness for a long time you you need some support and you could use it and it could help you face what you have to face the next thing is to cry a lot I have found that when someone tells me that they have actually finally finally resolved that problem that caused one illness after another in their lives very often they'll tell me that that they went through a time when they were broken and crying for weeks and weeks at a time sometimes you can't just cry it all out in one session you know sometimes you need a lot a lot more than that so no matter what you're crying for just cry things out because it it seems to help it seems to it seems to make things clearer it seems to hasten the process and the last one have have you ever carried a crying baby and found that instead of the baby stopping the crying after you carry them they cry even more you could think the baby just doesn't like you <laughs> but actually the truth is that the baby is trying to communicate in her way to you or his way they're trying to tell you I'm feeling like this they're putting that to you in the only way they know how to nine times out of ten it works and what I find is a very good idea is to imagine you can't speak, you can't read, you can't write. You're like a baby. Now, show yourself how you feel. One person I know, he had a stroke and at that time when he was not in control of his faculties to to speak to to say